Good evening, heroes and heroines, and welcome to Practicing Programming in C, the show where we code a complete annotation system live on stream. So yesterday we did the um, curling from Insopot's quote store, um, and we did this little to-do, cache the quotes, uh, and today I think I'm just going to try and do that, basically. <laughs> um, probably cache the quotes and potentially do the um, metaname keywords thing as well, because that would just be really easy. I mean, I keep mentioning this, and I keep mentioning that it's going to be easy, but I just never never bother to do it. Uh, but before we do, I'll just get the other terminal open. So it's like the right size for the stream. Double check that we're coming through. I am. Webcam is sort of in the right position, I guess. And no drop frames. So yeah, let's let's go for it. So caching the quotes. So yeah, let me just. I need to just research something a little bit here. I think it's the X XDG. Uh, Cache location, I guess. If that, if that is either not set or empty, and default equal to home cache should be used. Okay. So I believe I've got this set, XDG cache home. So let's just see, first of all, yeah. And it's saying, it was either not set or empty, a default equal to home cache should be used. Okay. So default CSS directory. What are our options? CSS directory. F is fourth integration. Images, JS, default medium, output location, typical location. So I suppose I could, I mean, I suppose I could technically switch to like, um, uh, sorry, like a this sort of a thing. Um, the special argument is this for the end of up it. Okay. Get along. It's not going to put that as well as that. It can indicate a long option. Interesting. Get opt long. I like it about that. And long options. Should be yeah. Take a probe to the form. Long up to the point of the first element of the row, struct option declared and get opt. Uh, yeah. How many common options at once? So, I'm not sure. Um, I 
and also I suppose they're they're temporary at the moment as well. Um, yeah, like I just I mean I only made, I only made these um, to give me a quick way of, of actually setting any of this stuff up because eventually I'll want to. I want to put these uh, in a configuration file. So, hmm. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly how many we'll have once we have the config file. I mean, probably none actually, honestly. <laughs> Like how many um oh. oh I don't have it installed. Um probably get it for the temp conference. I did do that actually at first. Um <laughs> yeah I did. That was the first thing I, I tried actually, and that was for doing the um, integration. So you can see here, uh, Cinema mode, you can set that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was, it was, that was the only environment variable I used, Cinema, cinema mode. Um, but then for some reason, I just made these flags. I think I've specifically actually requested um, arguments for some reason. I don't know exactly why, but I think he just fancied arguments, really. I think he was just in an argumentative mood or something. Um... So yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm really not sure. I guess I could just sort of say, um, <clears throat> I could use D for directory, I guess, for the cache directory. Or <laughs> unless I just don't bother. I might just not give it a temp. I might just not make it configurable. <laughs> you know, because it's this guy says, if that is either not empty set, a default to equal to this should be used. You know, so if somebody has set this, they've already configured this, haven't they? So they know where they want the stuff to go. And if they do want it to be in a different place from here, they could totally set this themselves. So yeah, I think I'm not just gonna do it for make it source level configurable. Source level configurable. So right. So you mean um, source level rather than user level? <laughs> so you just don't make it configurable. <laughs> Default CSS directory. You just compile what options you want. Mm. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's do that then. Oh, and here's our get end for, for the cinema mode. So default for the version. <laughs> Cash version is equal to. If 
get um, um, oh no, it's XG cash. What was it? <laughs> cash home. If that, then. Oh, hang on a minute, I can just do this in a, in a ternary, can't I? Oh, that's a point, actually. I would need to check that they've got a home as well. <laughs> Oh, and also, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'll have to construct the path, won't I? Hang <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, you want what I do is it for everyone? Super lazy. Well, let's just see about this. Directory contents, directory covers. Match of file name length is 200 feature, ASCII characters, few for multi regulars. File name. Okay. That might not include the directory path, but let's go with that. Right, so. Cash directory is going to be for that. <laughs> Thank God. Two meg buffers for everything. <laughs> wow, really? Or two K, K rather. <laughs> Maximum file size. Maximum file size. Hmm. Why do you do such big buffers? I mean, I suppose memory isn't such a premium as it was back in the day. So if we got to get um, a SD cache home. Then what we want to do is we want to copy string into the uh, cache directory, and it's going to be xg home sas cinera. Yeah, I think that's it. I think, and then it's just all this this nonsense again. That be also cannot lie. <laughs> Indeed, it's a copy string. If we got a, as you got else. I mean, surely everybody's got a home, haven't they? You know what I mean? Home cash, yeah.
So let's see if this even builds. It does build. Interesting. Fantastic. Oh, it was taking so much time because we we haven't cached it, cached the stuff. Quote crow for T fifty six not found. Unlucky. All right, so home cache scenario. So now I need to figure out how to make a directory. It's in sys stats. Make directory art. The middle shall create a new directory with name path. The file permission bits of the new directory shall be initialized from mode. These file permission bits of the mode argument shall be modified by the processor's file creation mask. When bits in mode, other than the file permission bits are set, the meaning of these additional bits is implementation defined. <laughs> okay. What other bits can you set? I wonder. The directory's user ID should be set to the processor's effective user ID. Yep, that sounds fine. The pro directory's group ID should be set to the group ID of the parent directory. Or to the effective group ID of the process. Implementation shall provide a way to initialize the group directory's group ID to the group ID of the parent directory. Implementations may, but need not provide an implementation defined way to initialize the directory's group ID to the effective group ID of the calling process. The newly, directed, the newly created directory shall be an empty directory if path names a symbolic link. Make directory shall fail and set error number to e exists. If path names a symbolic link, okay. Upon successful completion, make directory shall mark for update the last data access last data modification and last file um, status change time sets to the directory. Also the last data modification and last file status change time sets of the directory that contain the new entry shall be marked for updates. Okay, the key. The main directory at function shall be equivalent to main directory function except in the case where path specifies a relative path. Alright. In this case, the newly created directory is created relative to the directory associated with the file registry, FD, instead of the current working directory. Right, so I don't need to bother with that. Right, yeah. Okay. The positive directory means the function is structured to zero. Otherwise, these functions are to a minus one, instead of error to zero. All right, cool. So I can P error if that fails. All right, so make directory and it's sys stat. Oh, that is pretty unusual. You need to pretty unusual to need that much space, but you never know. Like you might have a directory that's direct like this. Yeah, so this is you don't have to do. String cat, you already have a, have a day which are open. I have a day you like. My major at at is you don't have to do string cat. Right, got you. Hmm. I suppose in this case, we know that it's kind of likely to be a short, a short path, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, surely people, surely people just keep their cash in a, in a sane place. We 
probably some, something to bear in mind though. Uh, includes this stat. So. So the only use for the cache at the moment is in the actual quote function. And we need to pass it the actual cache directory. <laughs> so build quote. Um, Oh, so then one call to it. Okay. Got a bit of <laughs> indeed. <laughs> so yeah. This is the first thing I want to do. So it's f so it wants to first try and open the um, the quotes. Right. So I'll do this now. <laughs> Oh, I need to actually control the path, don't I? So this is a quote cache path. Two fifty five. <laughs> Oh, actually, it could be um, read and write, couldn't it? Let's just double check I want to do this now. <laughs> Open reading and writing the stream position at the beginning of the file. Okay. The disposition for reading is at the beginning of the file, but the output is always appended to the end of the file. Interesting. Well, I don't think I can be too... S well, could I be smart about that, actually? <laughs> because the cache is going to match the thing that I download. Or is it? Well, I mean, technically it could. It might change, actually. So let's... um. Let's stick with just this.
my god. How do you use this now? Yeah, path name. Mode. Oh, it's, um, yeah, right. It's that, isn't it? Tiki arguments to be able to quote. Really? So, it takes info speaker ID and cache directory. TCU arguments to function build quotes. Left hand operand of comrade expression had no effect. Oh, hang on a second, what's going on here? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, oh dear, was it like this? I think that's correct. Just build my quotes, build my tags. Okie dokie, so let's just print F some stuff just to be on the safe side. With a bit of luck, we should hit the P error, but then we should print the path. Yeah. So this should be the path. Over, like using a debugger, uh, kind of, yeah. Um, I think I do, yeah. Um, I suppose for this thing in particular, it was really just making sure that I hadn't made any silly mistakes um, I mean obviously like you could make a silly mistake which you can only really catch in the debugger um, yeah I suppose yeah for that thing in particular all I was literally trying to do was um, I guess because it was a string, it was a string based thing, and I just wanted to make sure that I hadn't that I just built the string correctly. I guess. Um, Yeah, I'm not exactly sure the uh, the the logic actually behind my printf's and debugging uh, debugger uh, sort of methods, <laughs> if you like. I think usually the debugger is like a last resort sort of thing for me. 
Um, like if I don't know if I've done like a memory overflow or something. Uh, so you know if I've overflowed some memory that the ASAN hasn't caught or kind of written a, written a loop incorrectly maybe and I want to actually step through it all and see see exactly what the flow is like there's a bit to get it so that debug is, is easy to print F hmm Yeah, to me the reason for that though. Right. Interesting. So the old, the, I mean, the way that I would have done what I did there would have been, I guess, um, I would have broken build quote, run to there, and then. I guess step over the lines and then just print out the um, the quick cache path I guess that's what I'd probably have done So yeah, it needed to, it did need to have run the stuff. <laughs> so it needed to have got into this function and then run this part of the part of the thing to actually produce the thing. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think that's basically what I was what I was trying to replicate, um, you know, in doing the printf. I mean, I know I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big fan of like using the mouse and stuff, but possibly having the ability to hover over um, over the quote cache path probably you know if you hover over this it'd be cool if it kind of showed you what that was after having processed you know after having stepped over this line or if you hover over here Or there, actually, for that matter. <laughs> actually, it could be interesting to show what this is um, before this line is processed and after it. Um, but either way, it should need it require you to to run to run to this part of the program. I think. So, yeah. Um, so if we can't. If I can't open that, the K 
cache directory. So yeah, I want to see if the cache directory exists, don't I? <laughs> Tis of him, yeah. Not off the top of my head, no. Um, well, uh, No, I, I've not enough stuff for the head. Because <laughs> um, my little is past the source. So I know t the path to source is like. Um, oh, it's only the current file. So it's kind of like a relative path to source it gives you. Um, that's using the um, percentage sign. So for example, like um, set make program, I have set to to this. So it's like ZSH and then it runs it on the actual file. So that's that's the file name. Line number. Not sure I'd have to um, I'd have to look up look it up. Cash path. Don't worry about it. Okay. Let's just see actually if make directory. Make directory related to file descriptor. I want to see if it would just like ignore it if if it exists. Take a look at it when I get you. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's the point. Actually, one of the f things was if it exists. Yeah, the name file exists. I suppose technically you could sort of say um, I suppose you could just take uh, straight up, try and create the directory, and if the error is that it exists, then you got to go basically. So if that doesn't exist, then you should first of all try and create the directory. Uh, 
Um, so, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> right. Return zero. If my directory on the um, cache directory that it's like that. If that is equal to minus one, then what we want to say, <laughs> oh no, it's if. So this is actually going to, this would succeed the first time. Mode to mode. How does it want it? Mode T. The file permission bits are need to file permission bits of the mode arguments are modified. Oh, the bits, are they? Oh, I see. How to go to duration name that with read write search permission for any other with permission for others. In status. So, God, what is this telling me? Uh, shouldn't, they, shouldn't these guys be documented in here? error number. I suppose you call the thing and then you say if error number is equal to e exist. Huh, that's a bit annoying actually that it doesn't tell you what the what these guys are. Right, search permissions for owner and group. Let's read search permission. What what is search permissions? That's so what they call execute. I mean that seems like a fine five permissions to go with, so let's try it. Locally. So this is probably going to succeed. Exists. So So Cinema now exists. Uh I'm gone. Shouldn't there be a quotes directory? The quote cache path. Oh no, it just made the quash directory. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, hang on. Where's my directory? My directory is cache, cache directory, right? Okay. Ah. So, yes. 
Where's uh, where's that cashew trees here? So we actually want the cashew tree to turn into, because of the quotes, we'll, I, I actually want to give us a subdirectory for the quotes, basically just in case there's more stuff. Um, so the cash directory is then going to become the uh, quote cash directory. Yeah, that seems reasonable, I think. Oh, right, yeah, of course. I rolled it into the other thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. exists. Right, okie dokie. Could have found a lucky. So now so we still haven't made a fight made the directory. What should we make make the directory on? Oh the cash directory. Bloody hell. Quote cash directory. Oh, that's a point actually. <laughs> Can it make um like the entire path? You know, like if I remove recursively that directory. So that no longer exists. Pretty sure I created a directory. So create Cinera there. That is not built or something. Blimey, what's going on here? Directory. Notion file directory. You have to code the. Oh, right. God damn it. <laughs> so that's interesting. Does that mean that I've now got a directory that's floating in the middle of nowhere? that I can't actually access. Because I've got no... <laughs> I've got no Cinera directory. But apparently, if I run my program, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't say pretty sure we created the directory. The work register of the parent doesn't exist. Right. Okay. Core preservation of major issues. Hmm. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> So 
So I think I'm going to try and work through this because it's quite a funky little pr little problem. Um, it's a quote cast actually. And just bear with me just one second while I put some music on. Yeah, because I've run out of uh, I've run out of one of tricks point never. Let's get fifty words of snow on. Too well. <laughs> I mean, Vim's pretty sexy, but you know. So quite cashed out, actually. So, quote cast path. If we can't open this, then we need to do some stuff. Else, then. So if we can't find the uh, if we can't open the file, then we first of all want to see I mean basically it's gonna it's gonna be a while loop. Um removing the forward slashes from the pad. Oh, mind you, you can also have like this, can't you? So you need to make sure you're currently escaping. That's interesting actually, like how does, um, how does C interpret that? Well, hold on a second. Um, Can't touch test icicles. Okay. Cannot touch that. Okay, cool. So you just straight up can't. Um, you can't use this forward slash at all. That's true, yeah. Pass the whole line, not word or line number. Doesn't it pass the um doesn't it pass the time though? You know when you when you um send it back. Like it needs to, it, it, it doesn't it only send this part back? Or, or actually maybe just tell Vim to pass the whole line and then you pass it in bash. The bash script is all the passing, okay. So 
So there's no quick cash. Um, so yeah, I've established that you can't put a forward slash at all, which is handy. Mind you, if I'm hoping it as read plus, might that be a bit of an issue? <laughs> Do the beginning file. The file is created but does not exist. Right, yeah. Yep, for reading and writing, the file is created but doesn't exist. Otherwise it is truncated, right. Which I don't want it to do. I'll put those appendage to the end of the file. So this is kind of what I want the file to create if it doesn't exist. The initial file position of reading is at the beginning of the file, but the opposite is always appended to the end of the file. Which isn't what I want really. And write the three position to get the file. <laughs> okay. So yeah, if if we can't do that, then we know that the file the file doesn't exist. So we want to try. Well, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> God. The streams are just open reading and writing, reading and appending. Maybe I, maybe I'll do it A plus. Let's do it as A plus. The file, well, uh, the The initial file position remains at the beginning of the file, but the output is always dependent on the end of the file. Okay. <laughs> what distro are you on, Krefa? Pretty sure that isn't what Arch gives you. Oh, I've got it installed. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, Ubuntu. Should probably try Arch. Yeah, should probably try Arch. 
there just happens to be a handy installation video that somebody's made <laughs> and fully annotated. And I think there might be, is there a quote from Kerfer in here? see any mention of Kruf. I think Kruf was busy on that particular day. <laughs> Oops, wrong place, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> ah, there we go, Kruf is streaming. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, you did pop in, didn't you? Hmm. Don't know why I didn't quote you there. Kruf is streaming GB from Tinder right now as well. There you go, famous. How do you turn off highlighting? <laughs> okay. So yeah, the file, uh, well it's like the, um, we can't open it because the file's parent the file file's parent directory doesn't exist. I reckon. Oh actually. Well, let's see what the error actually is. <laughs> So this stream might be a bit longer than we were expecting. So no such file directory. So I'm going to postulate that the um, the actual reason is that the files pen directory doesn't exist. So what we need to do quote cache path. What we need to do is to try and create the quote cache directory. So let's make the quote uh, let's make a temporary thing here, which is gonna be uh sort of better staging directory. the um, protest directory. Don't even let me do it. Yeah. The fast pen directory doesn't exist. So there's going to be a staging directory here, which is going to be this. And then we're going to say is we're going to say while So while this keeps failing, we're going to strip off um, some of the uh, some of the staging directory. Oh, God. yeah, uh, that's a point actually. Um, hang on, we're going to have to. <laughs> strip it off, and then 
to make the directories back up again. <laughs> That's a bit annoying. That's in the channel. Oh, I see. What I can do is Four in die is equal to the <laughs> to the string length of staging directory. Um, <laughs> string length. Um, sorry, staging directory a tie is not equal to a forward slash. <laughs> minus minus, uh huh. Is that right? And then do nothing. So yeah, it's not really a four, is it? It's like a while, kind of. And then once we hit that, then we say, <laughs> um, surely we can just sort of replace this with a null. And then when we pass this back to this guy, surely it'll just read it as the, as the next directory down. Right it? The string length it also picks up. Like that that goes up to the uh, the null point, doesn't it? Or rather the null. Yeah, while the, while string at a high. Yeah, <laughs> right. I think this is gonna be okay. <clears throat> All right, so the idea here. <laughs> Is that this is stripping off parts of the um, parts of the the direct the uh, path? Until it successfully creates the actual path. Is that right? <laughs> I'll just try print F in this guy. So with a bit of luck, we should see it trying to
um, trying to make a directory, basically. Why didn't it make uh, Mio's directory? And why didn't it print out? Why didn't it print, print out more dudes? Oh, because I printed it off outside the while, this while loop. Well, hang on. <laughs> why did that only remove one? Well, maybe there's, there was only one to remove, maybe. But I mean, it seems like we've created at least one path there. And there's definitely quotes from Mio in there, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, right. There we go. <laughs> Fantastic. So it's made our guys. So is that all? Is that, is that it? So <laughs> that seems to have worked, I guess. So it's created career from Mitatsu. They're probably empty. Yeah. So now that we've got down to there, we want to pass the file. We go ahead and search the file for the quote. Right, fantastic. I'm not exactly sure that I've done that correctly though. Like, how is that? How is that? Um... I'll tell you what, actually. <laughs> What's probably happened here is that um, <laughs> I ran it when there was no Cinera and no quotes directory. So then it ran. Skipped back um, until it managed to create the Cinera directory, and then I ran it again, and then it managed to create the quote. I bet you that's what happened. Um, so let's just see. Um, if I would do that. Let's just tree that, just for ease. Yeah, we can do right. Okay, cool. So we have got it did create cinema and then it did create quotes, but it only made yeah right. So yes. So then in 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 here, I now need to go back through the process. Uh, to create the directories. <laughs> Until we successfully open the file. <laughs> so yeah, it's like... This is actually going to be a while, isn't it? While we can't do that, then um, we do the stuff. Right. That should be all it is.
which means that we don't need any of this stuff anymore. And then, then we can go ahead and search the file. Right. I think that's correct. So yeah, that just that just created our guys. Okay, so that's all it is apparently. <laughs> So now we want to actually open that file. The quote cache. Oh, hang on, we've opened the file, haven't we? <laughs> haven't we? Because the file is F open, yeah, quote cache. So we want to say, <laughs> how do we do this now? File size, isn't it, or something? Tell is that what it is? Yeah. Oh no, it's F seek. And it's F seek. Um quote cache seek end. Stream offset whence. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, oh, file size is equal to uh, I've got a <laughs> tell. Often the current value of the file position indicated for the stream point by stream. So we've got the file. So now we want a file pointer. Oh, sorry, we need to um, load this into our buffer, <laughs> right? Quote staging. 25, oh, hang on. <laughs> Yes, maybe I don't need to bother with the file size stuff. Yeah, let's give ourselves a quote staging thing. So yes, we want to malloc it. Do we want to f read into this buffer? Right. Um, beyond true strub. Oh, I did need the size. <laughs> Bloody hell. Beyond true strip file size caused frustration. Um, was it quote cache? Do you want to read this into into our location? Uh, 
and then we want to go through the just do this right it's just that it's just this process I think right and then Turn zero. That's if we found it. So, yeah, right. So if we get through here, then we can assume that we haven't found it. So then we want to curl it. Don't we? Let's uh, pull this out into a parse, like search quotes directory, file, uh, function. So what does this need to take? It needs to take the buffer, presumably. And what is this actually doing? This is returning a zero. Ah, right. It's returning a zero. undeclared really um it's an int isn't it so we're passing the quote info <laughs> god damn it passing all the stuff So basically what we're saying here is if if we get all the way through here then we haven't actually found a quote so search quotes so we need to pass it the buffer quote info and the id So um yeah, it's the info first, wasn't it? Sorry, the um, speaker. Wait, what was it? <laughs> Quite info, info. So, buffer, info, and ID. Really? 
really. Um, oh, I see, yeah. So what does this, actually, this guy actually need to do? It needs to... What is he actually doing? <laughs> <laughs> Quit staging. It doesn't need to affect the buffer. Too many L's. What am I actually doing here? <laughs> Fifty point seven two zero. That's cool. <laughs> it has its own sense of intu intuition. I think. Like when you discover. Um. The sort of. I don't know, like this sentence syntax. So like to delete a paragraph. Um which you must have new. So to delete around a paragraph, you you do D A P. Uh and that'll delete the space around it. It'll delete the um all the all the new lines around the paragraph apart from one I believe. There's one new line there. D delete DIP deletes inside a paragraph. Um, but then instead of DAP, you can do, do CAP to change around a paragraph. And that puts you into insert mode automatically. Um, DD is delete a line. CC is to change a line, so it sort of deletes it and then you straight into that. Um, what else do I use? You can sort of. Um, ah. How do you do these? <laughs> Change. Oops. Uh, hang on. <laughs> so surely. Ding, ding, ding. Right. Okay. So that change, change inside quotes. That's cool. And then change inside that. Right, that changes with inside those guys. So yeah, you can you can be sitting anywhere inside here. And you can change within it. Likewise with that. For just to say inside if that or something. Yeah, they are cool actually. Oh. Right, yeah, cool. I do like that actually. <laughs> You see, I mean, I don't really make, don't really make good use of them myself. And then to delete the entire thing, you can do DA. Open brackets. If you if you need that. So yeah, like you don't need to remember like sort of you don't need to remember one off key key bindings for different things you can sort of remember the remember how it starts you know remember roughly what you need to do and then as you're typing you know as you're keying in the thing you can like build up the actual thing that you that you want to do Change, delete. Um, pfft. 
Yeah, I think those are the main ones really. Change inside that. Delete inside it. And then you've got things like um, change forwards to the first dot, for example. So then it, what it's done is it's kind of just behind the scenes, just kind of grabbed all of this. Oops. <laughs> um, grabbed all of that. Well, also, <laughs> like saying that, I can do um, V to go to visual mode. Visual mode is where you can select stuff. And then do F dot, and that goes forwards to the dot. Or F exclamation mark. Or you can go like T and then dot, and that's like up to up until basically. So it's to the thing, but the character before. So yeah. It's kind of nice how it gives you that. It gives you a bit of slack, I find, in that you can sort of. For example, you can do VF and then that. But if you realise that you wanted to actually go up to the G, for example, say that you wanted to, you wanted to delete, to delete up until the G, right? Say that you wanted to do that, but but you'd accidentally. You wanted to do that, and you kind of spotted that there was a, a dot here. What you'd probably want to do is go like dt dot to delete until the dot. But say like you went df, and then you're like, oh, right, yeah. I hit the wrong key there. <laughs> you can then like just press your G if you want. And then you've got one, two, you didn't go far enough, so you can just press dot, and then that deletes to the next G. So yeah, so that's one of the things about Vim really, is that it gives you that, it gives you that slack. So you can sort, you know, you can just get a rough idea of what you want to do, and then kind of do something like that. I mean, it's not smart, necessarily it's just the way that it um it allows you that those different kind of things those different movements So it doesn't do programming for you. So yeah, that can be passed like that. Info. There's a pointer. Did I mean to use that? Well, I did use that. Didn't I? <laughs> right, what is that trying to tell me? Maybe. Oh. Okay. 
Hmm. Interesting. Search quotes. So, yeah. If that is equal to one, then we need to curl it. Yeah, we need to then curl it, uh, and and then search the quotes again, don't we? Just do exactly the same call, uh, and then also. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> Because it is the same thing. If this fails, if that fails, then we need to free. Oh, actually, hold on. Hold on. Do I output any error? No, I don't. So where's my error gone? Then we need to return one. Well, we first wanted to free the buffer, obviously. I return one. So what have I messed up there? I mean, it's surely just a case that I didn't do enough parentheses, maybe. What's the cookie? You're good if we run to this line. And then print the value of this word as if as if it were variable. What a good keyboard shot would get. Oh, you mean just literally the key that you, that you go with? <laughs> yeah, I don't use that F three. <laughs> Debug CLI. Execute debug CLI. Until then, print expand that line dot expands. Wow. <laughs> Are you uh, streaming your stuff, by the way, Krofer? Because it'd be kind of interesting. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see um, your work and my work side by side. Um, 
just to really give a picture as to who's boss. Join the rest of the earth. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, right, I need to write into the actual thing as well, don't I? So we need to... Uh, curl the quotes. Curl the quotes. And then we want to write into the thing. That's really right now if that's a question. It was the, it was it was the question, yeah. Quote cache path, right. So we're going to read this file in. Right, okay. Then I reckon, I reckon, close this file. And then down here, we want to open it up again. This time with write permissions. And if we got down to here, surely we should know that, it, well, let's do it anyway. So we're opening it re writable, and then we're going to F write. On street drop. Cause frustration. Right, so then we've written the written the thing out again. And then here We're then uh, searching the quotes again. We want to see how we have to work on Humbug due to all the things I'm working on. Maybe that's what we really work out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh right, quick cash pass. Sorry, yeah, right. Yeah. 
Three pull the quest stage and turn one. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility that this is correct. Right of size one. In search quotes, really. In ID. Memory access at offset 100 for those is variable. In ID. Eight three eight. So in ID is four. In time is that. ID. So ID doesn't need to change because that. Is just the number, isn't it? Info will change because we're actually going to write this out into the actual into the actual dude. And the quote staging buffer doesn't need to change either. Because it's literally just there for us to search. Quote nine twenty. Where is this uh, in ID though? When we access the top set one hundred overflows is variable. That uh, insert quote at eight thirty. Oh. Oh. Right of size one. At this register, this memory location, rather. So, this is my stack. 838 address that is located in stack of thread this at offset 100 in frame. Does this mean that I'm blowing the stack out, maybe? In search quotes, 830. This frame has three objects. Time in ID and in time. Stack buffer. Yeah, stack buffer overflow. Wow. Just do some printf debugging. I get here. Um, although, like, this might be a case for. Well, I got it. I see. I see that happen once, don't I? Okay. That happens once. So, do we get all the way through it? We probably don't, do we?
So we don't get there, so we so we're dying somewhere within search quotes. Don't get to here. Out pointer. Out points plus plus quite staging. Ah. Does it, does it not like it here? I get here. Right, so yeah, it's this loop here. Quote stating point at plus plus. Oh. Oh, hang on a minute. Well, quote staging pointer is already up here, isn't it? <laughs> Interesting. We probably need a need a size, don't we? Do that. So 
so a sync file size. And this time it's going to be the size returned by curl, whatever that was. Um, curl into buffer. That returns the length, right. Yep, which is what I want. So where does that return into? Well, <laughs> res. Which case would have been a square. Need to get a new job. What keyboard have we got? These are kind of a bit, uh, they're a little bit concave. Maybe F nine, maybe. Ah. Quote staging, right, yeah, we've got this here, quote staging pointer. <laughs> um, so the, uh, So with a bit of luck, the next time I run it, it should be quick. Yeah. Wow, I think that's that's it. I think. If I just give credit for quote 12, surely he's had 12 quotes. Oh no, it wasn't. So there we go. Let's just double check that it has actually produced something. And there they are. Uh, well, hang on a minute. Tweak, now I'm just going to use your config for Is that the actual right quote? So I believe this one is about poo. Yeah. Programmable things. I think I did programmable things. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty fantastic. Actually, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so this should take some time. So it needs to pull the quote. That's Casey. But the next time it should be really, really quick. Get programmed things. Could we just um, do a test? This is going to be out of date, actually, isn't it? 
Oh, wow, well, it's not. <laughs> so, I've currently got 21 quotes. Let me just see if I can um, get my 21st quotes. Right, so that pulled it and then it was quick. Hmm, well, I, can I just put this live? So, if um, if we add a quote for me now, the question is, will my program know to go and try and try and uh, pull the new ones? In fact, I think I already know that it does, don't we? Because it's trying to find it. Oh, that's that's a question actually. Ah, so now it's, it has kept it. We'll probably know how to put the new ones. All right, let's try it. Oh wow, and it has done, I think. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty awesome. If I do 24, that's trying to find it and it doesn't find it. What does this actually produce? So it, yeah, it just didn't build it, did it? Which I think is fair enough. But it should have pulled in 23 at the same time. And that was quick. If we had a quote for now, now we'll probably be able to pick it up. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> So, I think we're done. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> let's let's try and get that in. So that took it. Took an interminable amount of time. But that's pretty awesome. It did pick it up. But then the next time, it's just really quick. The only issue would be would be a somewhere deleted. Right. Should we try that? Oh, right, yeah. Probably not worth thinking too much about. So I just find it, yeah, interesting. We're going to need a rebuild cache option, aren't we? basically. Let's make a note of that. So we have cached the quotes. Um, Rebuild cache option. Yeah, I think that's what we'd need, isn't it? Uh, we might want to con make this configurable as well. The uh, the URL, because it's possible that another another network. Would use Interbot as as their as their quote master. You could also make the quote menu linked to the individual page on the quote side too, if you wanted. Ah. Oh right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> right. Maybe zero. Interesting. Let's do that. Build quotes. Bit too intuitive. <laughs> Thank you.
Right, yes, we've built the cloak. We've got the speaker, we've got the quote ID. Is that how you do it? Oh, underscore blank, okay. So yeah. Oh no, not at all. I just had to tweak the style. <laughs> Actually, it um, yeah, doing it that way, I've lost the I've lost the link to the time code. I think. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> okay, but has that opened up a new thing? Oh no, we're fine. Service to everyone. So that was um, quite menu. So when you quotes quotes ref quotes container a target blank oops yeah, I don't exactly want that um, <laughs> This is 
just one mention of quotes in this entire CSS file. So I could probably do the class ref on that, couldn't I? Kind of. Still got those. <laughs> That's quite nice, actually, like that. Um, although it's not, it's not uh, consonant with this. Yeah, it's like a weird flash <laughs> for some reason. It's kind of like the stars are fighting, I think. Actually, that's an idea. Yeah, you can go to previous and next. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, and you've totally, uh, you've nailed the buttons. So I can navigate between these guys using the um, square bracket keys. It's like um, double tap of the open square bracket to go previous and double tap of the Close square bracket to go to the next. And I guess that's just because it has the uh, the text previous and next, which is kind of interesting. I like how the <laughs> the class is wrecked. Just got to look at how that works. <laughs> No, oh, it's a five. You've got to, you've got to take all the credit. Oh right, they're clicking that because you're a random one. That's nice. <laughs> ah, I see. God, I've gone to plan. <laughs> Too good to do that. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> what we're we doing? Uh, Let's just open up Firefox. Give ourselves a Firefox private. So I can inspect the, the stuff. Okay, thank you. No script is installed, so pop up a load of stuff. Oh. So 
So what have we got here? Got an A ref. So it's a span that we want. So yeah, it's just the the A ref just has to be has to have no margin, I guess. Uh, well, hang on a second. What is what are we getting here? The span ref focused. Is it just that the span needs to not have the class ref? No. I'm not exactly sure what, uh, what I'm even looking at here. <laughs> there we go. So that is working. Ah, right. And now I need to give us a key to actually open up the <laughs> to open up the quote. Although Firefox will prevent it. So how do I do this now? So this is in JS probably. There we go. <laughs> so that was easy enough. Uh, yeah. So I mean that seems to be working basically as I'd expect. Except Firefox is obviously screwed with us. Yeah, those guys are definitely closed now. And yeah, you can see that that's just opened up a new thing. I do have nice things. Wow. So yeah, I think we've just nailed it, guys. <laughs> Everything seems to be working according to plan. Quote one. take exactly that's 222 well if I finish in the next 22 seconds that will be, be all the twos but yeah let's uh, go to the notes so we haven't done the keyword still <laughs> animals for to discouraged yeah, so what we've done today isn't even on the to-do list. <laughs> it was it was just caching the quotes. So let's just um git add hmod to that and sino.js. Oh, I actually need to um change the help, don't I? References and credits menus. Right, God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a 
this is a bit of a tweaky thing now. Um, right, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, this is so tweaky. Like, I mean, I do, I do like. Well, we can't actually see what it looks like, but all I'm doing here now is making this fade out some of the stuff that isn't available. But it's just so, I don't know, just just weird. If we have a quote menu, then we want a coffee string. Quotes. Um, God, it's like a it's like a flaming state machine. This thing. <laughs> so if we've got a quote menu, then we need to say. If has references menu. If it has a references menu, else we copy the buffer. Um, span class on available. <laughs> Oh, 
and then um, if we've got a reference number there we do that and then we say here if we also have the crest as menu <laughs> references and credits menus So if we have a quote menu, we do quotes, references, if we've got a reference menu, then we say that, else that is unavailable, and then we say if it has a credits menu, then we want to close that span Is that right? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> to buffer. <laughs> right for this credit card is menu. close that span oh right yeah so we don't need to close the span yet right <laughs> Jesus so I think those sensors are all correct so if we have a quote menu we copy it into the buffer quotes if you have rest of the menu then we Copy references and credits menu. Yep. If there's no reference menu, then we do that when available. Oh, sorry. This is still the credits, so. So if it has a reference, then yeah. If it also has a credits, then we do that. But if it, we don't have a credits, then we do this. Yep. Otherwise, if we don't have a reference menu, the rest is unavailable. If we ask the credits, then we do this. Otherwise, we do this, which seems all right to me. Now the other case here is um, basically these guys, kind of the other way around. If we have a references menu, then we want to do that, close that span. Otherwise, 
You want to keep that span open. Close the span. So we have got our references. We have got credits. We haven't got the credits. Otherwise, we still haven't got the references. Just close that span. And if we got down to this one, um, this means that, um, oops, well, that didn't work as expected. <laughs> this means that we want to do the whole lot odd available. Right. I think that's correct. This would be a miracle, honestly, if this is right. Um, what was that? Yeah, it was this. Quotes, references, and credits menus. <laughs> right. References menus. Uh, right. There we go. So I've just missed out the copy string. Oh, do you do it inside the Q, inside the H2? <laughs> there we go. Quest references credits menus. <laughs> right, references and credits menus. So now we need to. Delete the refs. Quotes references menus, yep. Quotes references and credits menus. So yeah. And you can't you can't get it out of the credits menu. <laughs> like there's there's got to be a credits menu. So I think that's correct. <laughs> so yeah, that's the uh, that's the sort of attention to detail that you get on practicing programming in C, folks. Does it still actually open the thing up? 
Yeah. <laughs> Four if I'm not found. Right, yeah, because you need to rebuild the cache. Yeah, I think finally we can add add our dude. Synode.js as well. So the only thing that we did today <laughs> was quote cash. Well, hang on. <laughs> Cash the quotes, obviously. <laughs> Cash the quotes. And we also link to um, Insobots. Well, insofar as a site, right? Insofar as it's a quote site. Quotes. Yeah, so cache the quotes. Also linked to Insta Files' quote sites. Um, and add a key. <laughs> I don't think we need to do that actually. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Let's go with this. Get push. So curled, but then keywords. Yeah. Okay, so next time I'm definitely going to do the keywords. I'm definitely going to handle multiple annotators, co hosts, and guests. And then I think once we've got these guys in, I think I will make a new um, version for the thing. So I'll just do a tag. Um, so can't we have these tags? I'll just bump this up to probably 0 0.2, I guess, because we've done some features here. Um, the reason I'm putting off the exposing URL thing is because that will need kind of mocking up HTML, which is always a bit of a chore. <laughs> um, and I think I might actually postpone this until after I've done, until after I've, I'm generating um, like a full project worth of pages, because currently we're only, we're only making one page like every time, every time we build it, I think, every time we do this, or like, for example, if I call this, which might actually crash, but if I call this, it just keeps, um, it just loops over them all, outputting them all to the same file, which isn't really much help. Ideally, I want to, the, ne the next part really, is building up an index file that will contain a project's worth of stuff. So basically, um, I want to build up an index file that contains basically all of these guys and then loop over that index file outputting all the annotations for these along with like a page like a an episode guide page that links to each of these people uh, so that is that is basically the goal so by the end of the by the end of this month i need to have done that basically uh,
But yeah, that's not going to be until we've done the keywords and the annotators. And hopefully they won't be too much. They won't be too much work because they're already passed. These guys are passed. And the keywords are just going to be the categories anyway, which are already passed. Um, so yeah, it should be dead easy. Um, but yeah, that is all for now. So thank you very much, Heroes and Heroines, for being heroic and being here and being beautiful and for being quote-tastic, for being quote-worthy and for, for obviously for being awesome. Uh, until next time though, farewell for now. <laughs>